In that first year that I became a hedge priest, I had no shoes. As a priest, everything I had owned belonged to the church. So when I left, I left with nothing but an old monk's habit given to me as an act of charity. In their eyes, I was a sinner and cast from the embrace of our mother church. But it's not for this that I speak against them. I speak thus because it's for their greed and debauchery that God will judge them. And it's for their arrogance in telling those they preyed upon how to live their lives that we finally rose against them. The plague had swept across Christendom and death had taken half of England. Due to my teachings, I was put before the bishop's court and my church taken from me. And so it was that after the plague had come, I became a wandering preacher to those new peasants and went among them preaching the true word of God. I asked them a question. When Adam delved and Eve did span, who was then the gentleman? A question that the answer of was simple, none. If we were to ever have God's kingdom upon the earth, then it should be made the same, that we should be ruled by none but God. Finally, the king passed laws that set a low pay for peasants and new tax, the same amount for both peasants and lord to pay for the wars in France, a war fought by men who had no quarrel whilst their bickering leaders watched. I was imprisoned by the bishop for preaching wherever I went on my wanderings through England. And when I was released, I carried on as before, wandering the roads and teaching the word of God until 15 years had passed and I was truly cast from the church. No longer was I simply forbidden to preach, but was excommunicated, and any who listened to my sermons in the woods or in the villages threatened with the same. And the peasant was once more tied to the lands of lords, and a child became king over us. And I carried on. For who are these men that stand above us? Nothing but the sword gives them any mastery over us, and nothing set their cold hearts and greed make them different. Was it, as they say, God put men in charge over plowmen, or did they murder their way to become his master? Five years after the church had discarded me, it pulled me back to it. The bishop's prison at Maidenstone, where I spent so long in contemplation. I came to know how those who set themselves as God's voice on earth shall be found wanting by the Lord. And in the year of 1381, I discovered the men of England agreed. As I spoke with Watt Tyler and saw the crowds lift the heads of the bishop and mayor, I felt the time of God's kingdom on earth would grow from these harsh seeds. We would set the world afire, and rising from the ashes would be a land where none would call another master. As we marched to London, men flocked to us till it seemed that none would ever withstand us. I blessed the multitude on the banks of the Thames and we swept into the city. But when Wat Tyler went to speak with the king under a flag of truce, he was struck down by their swords. The king himself rode to the men and bid them follow him if they would truly be free. For he led them to Clerkenwell Fields where they were slaughtered by the men hidden there whilst a wounded Tyler was beheaded on the altar of the church, he'd sought sanctuary. The dream was shattered. I was caught in St Albans and tried before the king himself. I told him it was he who was guilty in the eyes of the Lord, not I. They hung me, slit open my belly and showed my guts to me. I refused their priest, for my God is not the same as theirs. My name was John Ball, and they shall do the best that I am forgotten.